Can the health of our gut affect our overall health and our MS? Yep. Today, I'm going to talk about what the research is showing about the health of our guts and how it may be related to our overall health and how it may be affecting MS diagnosis, MS symptoms, and the course of MS. Hello, my dear friends, and welcome. My name is Vicki Hatch, and this is Even So, It Is Well. I'm glad that you're here. I started to learn about gut health when I earned my certificate in plant-based nutrition, but lately I've done a deeper dive into it and I find it fascinating. I'm going to geek out a little bit on you here today. We have over 30 trillion microorganisms in our gut. That's more than the number of human cells that we have. Wow! And did you know that we can cultivate healthy and not so healthy microorganisms by what we feed them and how we live? It's almost like having pets. But let's start with what the research shows about the gut microbiome and MS. In this paper from The Lancet in 2019, they discuss the susceptibility to MS and they include a section on the changes in the incidence and prevalence of MS and the environmental factors that may be a driver of this increased susceptibility. It states, Prime candidates include infections, such as with Epstein-Barr virus or other organisms, as the initiator of multiple sclerosis, with the suggestion that the infections start in the gut and spread to the central nervous system. Environmental exposures such as smoking, lack of sunlight, diet changes in the gut microbiome, and obesity have also received support as risk factors for the onset of multiple sclerosis. Uh-huh. And in this study, they did a fecal transplant from twins, one with MS and one without, into mice, and they found evidence that human MS-derived microbiota contained factors that precipitate an MS-like autoimmune disease in humanized transgenic mouse model. The mice that got the fecal transplant from the people with MS developed mouse-like MS symptoms. Hmm. And in this review, they state, there's mounting evidence in preliminary human studies suggesting that a dysbiotic MS gut microbiome could affect disease progression. Hmm. And they concluded, these experimental findings show that alteration of the GALT, the gut-associated lymphoid tissues, or the metabolic pathways triggered by gut microbes affect the severity of the central nervous system inflammatory demyelination. It seems like they're onto something. So what does this mean? A dysbiotic MS gut is one that's out of balance. The imbalance in the microbiota changes the way it functions and is associated with inflammation and disease. And as always, I will put links to all these studies in the description below if you would like to check them out. So, the research into the gut microbiome and MS is still relatively new, and they've not been able to come up with any big conclusions or make recommendations on treatments yet, but I feel that there's more than enough to cause me to delve a bit more into how to improve our gut health. In my recent video on anti-inflammatory foods, which I'll put a link to above and in the description below, I touched on how a whole food, plant-based diet can help restore or maintain a healthy symbiotic gut microbiota. I decided to find out a bit more on how to have a healthy gut, so I read Fiber Fueled by Dr. Will Bolsowitz. This is a great book, and it's easy to read and full of great information. I highly recommend it, and I'll put a link in the description below if you'd like to check it out. He also recently released a cookbook, but I've not read that one yet, but I'll also put a link below if you'd like to check it out. In the book, he shares that study after study shows that plants are good for our health. They're nutrient-dense, low in calories, and they have vitamins, minerals, antioxidant compounds, and have unique medicinal chemicals called phytonutrients that are only found in plants. And they're loaded with fiber, and fiber is key to a healthy gut biome. Also, plant protein increases the growth of anti-inflammatory species in our gut biome. One of the biggest contributors to a healthy gut is fiber. 
When fiber gets into our colons, it produces short-chain fatty acids. And short-chain fatty acids, the main metabolites produced by the colon by bacterial fermentation of dietary fibers and resistant starch, are speculated to play a key role in neuroimmunoendocrine regulation. It helps our guts get healthier. All fiber is not created equal though. We can't just drink a glass of water every day with a fiber supplement mixed in. More on that later. As I said earlier, when our gut microbiota is unhealthy, it's called dysbiosis. When this happens, we lose diversity and in the process, see a higher proportion of inflammatory microbes. You know MS is an inflammatory disease, right? Mm -hmm. One of our main goals to live well with our MS is to decrease inflammation. Dr. Bolsowitz also shared that since the 1950s, the rates of type 1 diabetes, multiple sclerosis, and Crohn's disease have risen 300% or more. And he believes there's a connection to our increasingly unhealthy guts. He goes on to share that seven of the top 10 causes of death are linked to lifestyle heart disease, cancer, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD, stroke, Alzheimer's, and diabetes and kidney disease. The problems are caused by our diet and lifestyle, yet Western doctors almost completely ignore diet and lifestyle as therapeutic treatments. To be fair though, our doctors are not trained in nutrition. They have very little or no training on how what we consume affects our health. I know, crazy, right? So what does the gut do? It digests our food, delivers nutrients to our body, and eliminates waste, right? Yes, but did you know it also produces more than 30 neurotransmitters? There's growing evidence that the gut microbiota plays an important role in the pathogenesis of neurological diseases via the gut-brain axis. They've discovered that the gut is a separate nervous system known as the second brain or the enteric nervous system. So how do we eat to increase the health of our gut biome? Excellent question. The single greatest predictor of a healthy gut microbiome is the diversity of plants in our diet. Dr. Bolsowitz recommends consuming 30 different plants a week as the greatest predictor of our gut microbial diversity. 30 different plants, that seems like a lot. Well, let's break it down. If we divide 30 by seven days in the week, we get 4.29. So 4.29 different kinds of plants a day across a week. Here are some examples of foods that I regularly eat. Smoothies, this is my berry smoothie. It has kale, spinach, banana, strawberries, raspberries, blueberries, and flax seeds. That's seven right there. And a couple of times a week, I chop up a bunch of veggies to add to my salads. This week included red bell pepper, carrots, zucchini, summer squash, celery, red onion, and purple cabbage. And when I make the salad, I use greens and I add tomatoes. So that's nine more. Another favorite salad is my bean salad. It has kidney beans, black eyed peas, chickpeas, cannellini beans, bell peppers, and that's a repeat so I won't count those, onion, and cilantro. So that's another six. And recently I made stuffed sweet potatoes for dinner that had sweet potato, black beans, corn, onion, that's a repeat so we won't count that one either, and salsa. That's four more. I also make a quinoa and brussels sprout dish that has quinoa, Brussels sprouts, dried cranberries, and almonds. That's four more. We are at 30 different plants with just five dishes. If we eat three meals a day, that gives us 21 opportunities to add different kinds of plants. Seems doable. If you're interested in the recipes for these, please check out the link below where you can download a PDF with the recipes or the links to where I found the recipes. Okay, so what happens when our guts are in dysbiosis, when they're not healthy? We can develop something called leaky gut. Holes can occur in the intestinal wall, allowing bacteria, antigens, and toxic substances like bacterial endotoxin to get past the intestinal wall, activating our immune system. 
In this study, they link a protein in cow's milk called the buterophilin to MS. It states, bovine buterophilin subdomain shows surprising similarity to the human myelin oligodendrocyte glycoprotein, a protein exposed on the surface of myelin sheaths. And our study lends structural support to either hypothesis of a correlation between the consumption of cow milk and the prevalence of neurological autoimmune diseases. It is thought that the protein gets into our systems through a leaky gut. Yikes! And meat, dairy, and eggs, and seafood in our guts can make a compound called TMAO, trimethylene and oxide. And people with higher levels of TMAO in their blood have more than twice the risk of heart attack, stroke, and other serious cardiovascular problems. But when we eat whole foods, our guts create short-chain fatty acids and butyrate. These can help seal up a leaky gut. When we feed our guts, we try to feed the good bugs and not the bad bugs. We need to cultivate the growth of healthy bugs. I know what you might be thinking. Can I live on nothing but plants? Yes. A 2014 study compared the overall nutritional value of multiple different diets and found the vegan diet to be the most nutritionally complete. They concluded consistently the vegan diet as the most healthy. Every single plant has a unique blend of fiber, phytochemicals, and microbes worthy of celebration. So I invite you to increase your plants. Be intentional on creating healthy eating habits that include a large diversity of plants. There's over 20,000 kinds of edible plants out there. It's time to start trying them. Be patient though, it can take 28 days for the microbiome to adapt to dietary fiber and get the digestive enzymes necessary for fiber producing and increase short chain fatty acid production. I could talk for hours about gut health, but this video is getting long, so I'll wrap it up here. If you'd be interested in a follow-up video with more information about the gut biome, let me know in the comments below. The question of the day is, how many plants do you eat in a week? Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. If you like this video, please give it a like. This really helps the channel. And if you're not subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming videos. Until next time, be well.